Greetings, my lovelies. This is Blake here, and welcome to my review of The Conjuring 2. So, if you liked the first Conjuring, you should enjoy this sequel on at least some level, because it works for identical reasons. I personally loved The Conjuring. In fact, it was among my favorite movies of its year. And I thought that this was a good sequel, a worthy addition to this potential franchise. It is exactly what Annabelle should have been. But I'm not quite as enthusiastic. I highly doubt this is going to appear in my top 10 favorite movies of 2016 list. And the main problem, I believe, is even though it works for identical reasons, it is also just identical to the first film. Um, it's not interested in exploring new territory, and believe it or not, the first film was. Uh, it, in a lot of ways, I could sum up The Conjuring 2 as James Wan's greatest hits, because I recognized a lot of cues from the Insidious movies and even Dead Silence, not to mention the first Conjuring. There is nothing original about this movie. Uh, however, he does take some of his past scare tactics and he improves upon them. I especially noticed this whenever he seemed to be borrowing from Insidious Chapter 2. Now, I don't dislike Insidious Chapter 2. I think it's just an okay movie, but it is generally regarded as one of James Wan's weaker flicks. And while this is pure speculation, I find myself wondering if James Wan himself was disappointed in Insidious Chapter 2, but also felt like there was a lot of potential for scares, and so he just decided to uh, reuse those scare tactics for The Conjuring 2, but this time perfect them. Make The Conjuring 2 what Insidious Chapter 2 was trying to be. Uh, and if that is the case, it worked as I thought The Conjuring 2 was a lot scarier than Insidious Chapter 2. Uh, but that does draw a lot of attention to the film's lack of originality. And when you compare this to The Conjuring, it's pretty much just the same formula, maybe even the same story all over again. Once again, a prologue case goes wrong, and this causes the Warrens to consider, consider retirement. But of course, this one last haunting draws them back into the fold. Uh, once again, the victims of this haunting is a large, dysfunctional, but loving family. Uh, once again, there's a lot of time spent on the Warrens bonding with this family. Uh, once again, there is a big red herring surrounding the entities who are uh, haunting this family. Uh, so there's very little that The Conjuring 2 does differently. You even see that one um, spinning toy or a variation of it that was so prominent in the first film. I'm not saying that The Conjuring 2 does any of this badly. Even though the film was a bit too long, I thought it was well paced. I thought the characters were likable and interesting enough. Um, but it is strange how this film had a bunch of writers and they more or less just came up with the same stuff that that had already been conceived in the first movie. And if the first Conjuring had not existed, I probably would have praised The Conjuring 2 as some sort of genius, because it does so much of the stuff that I personally found to be unique about the first film. Um, for example, I like how upbeat and optimistic both of these Conjuring movies are. It just sets them apart from the rest of the crowd. Uh, there's a lot of warmth within the interactions of these characters and that just makes you really want to see them um, you know, emerge from this story you know, victorious and triumphant. Um, I, I like the use of comedy. It helps uh, lighten up the situation a bit so it's not so grim and bleak and provides an interesting contact, contrast with the very dark and shadowy visual style. And I thought that the humor was funny. Um, and, and once again, you don't usually see that kind of balance in haunting movies these days. Uh, the, it acknowledges certain cliches just so it can actively avoid them. 
Um, I love how the family flees the house almost immediately. Uh, something that you really think should be more common in any haunting picture, but sadly it isn't. I like how it's, it's set up as if, well, okay, the mother's not going to believe the children. Um, because in so many of these movies, the parental figure, uh, usually the father though, now the father is out of the picture in this case, but they initially think that the children are lying and just trying to get attention. And, you know, it starts off with the mother, you know, saying, you know, stop screwing around. I've had enough with this. Only for her to witness the paranormal herself. And then you think, well, the neighbors aren't going to believe them. But then they also become witnesses to what's happening. And then the cops are come, you know, arrive. And they're acting like they're very suspicious of this woman as if, you know, they think she's full of shit, maybe abusing these kids. And then they witness it themselves. And I love this because it is going against our expectations, which adds an aura of unpredictability, which adds so much more to the suspense. All great stuff, right? Right, it is great. There's just one little problem. The Conjuring had already done this first, so now The Conjuring 2 just doesn't feel quite as special. If The Conjuring 2 existed in place of the original, I probably would have felt a lot more enthusiastic about the movie, but it is the sequel, so it's kind of a moot point. Still, there are two ways to look at this issue. The first is, you lump in these movies together, uh, and because they are so different from the masses, you can argue that they, they could share the title of uniqueness as a pair. The second option is The Conjuring 2 is just a retread of the first film and therefore does not deserve the title of uniqueness. There actually is a third option and that neither film really was unique, that uh, The Conjuring was a massive cliche storm and the sequel just followed suit. I personally disagree with that interpretation. I think it's actually a very superficial look at the movie, but opinions are opinions. I respect yours if that is what you believe, and you probably won't appreciate The Conjuring 2 if you felt that way about the first film. But as for me, I, I'm stra straddling the first two options. On one hand, The Conjuring 2 gave me a, a special experience that I had only really previously felt with the first film, but on the other hand, I had already felt an identical experience with uh, the first film, so um, The Conjuring 2 just probably won't stand out as much within my memory. Um, but even with all of this said, I still thought The Conjuring 2 was a very uh, professionally crafted horror film. I thought the camera work was great, the editing was great, the music was great. It created this foreboding and unsettling atmosphere that never really let up. Even though the film does go beyond the two hour mark, I never thought that it was dragging its feet. I never got bored or impatient. Um, I pretty much felt everything that the movie wanted me to feel. And, uh, yeah, that's all I could really say. Um, James Wan actually kind of made CGI a little scary, something which does not happen very often, if ever. But that whole uh, dog transformation effect, like, genuinely freaked me the fuck out. And I loved the, the Crooked Man um, creature. It reminded me a lot of the Babadook. But what's interesting is a lot of people have disagreed with me about this, that they feel that it kind of felt out of place. Um, once again, opinions are opinions, but I thought it worked. It, um, and it got under my skin. Uh, but generally, I, you know, if you liked The Conjuring, you will like The Conjuring too. Um, if you want to read my written version, uh, please check the show more section below. Uh, I am losing my voice, so I am going to end this now. Um, follow me on Twitter and Facebook. Uh, check out my website, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, so, once again, if you liked The Conjuring, definitely see Conjuring 2, probably in theaters, depending on how much you liked The Conjuring. But, uh, and if you you know, thought The Conjuring was pretty good but not great, maybe you should just wait till it comes out on DVD, but it's up to you. And if you, of course, did not like The Conjuring, you're not going to like this one either, so uh, take that into consideration. And I shall see you guys later.